Hello everybody, and this is Adam from RPG Site, and I am here with Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, which is a, a remaster of the PlayStation 2 game set to release this July for PlayStation 4. Now, uh, first thing I want to note is, uh, for this preview, there are a lot of things that I am not allowed to show under embargo yet, but I just wanted to make a quick video to kind of show off some of the early areas of the game and uh, detail some of the the, the changes and additions you'll find in the Zodiac Age. So, most importantly, this remaster is based off of the International Zodiac Job System version uh, of Final Fantasy XII, which released in Japan back in 2007. Now, that version of the game never left Japan, so for English players, those of us in North America and Europe, the, this remaster is the first time we get to see the changes and additions made uh, way back when to that version of the game. And of course the remaster adds some of its own flavors uh, and additions in, in, in addition to the enhanced visuals and texture upgrades and things like that. So I'm pretty early in the game here. My my party is Van and Pinolo. And after some of the opening cutscenes and tutorial areas I have access to some of the, the earlier areas in the game like the um, desert and the Giza Plains. So here we are in the Giza Plains, and let's take out, uh, let's just see what the battle system is. So let's take out some monsters here. So this is the battle system in Final Fantasy XII, if you recall, or if you're seeing it for the first time. It's not quite an action RPG, but it's not really turn-based either. It's actually kind of MMO-like, where you tell your characters what to do, and then they kind of proceed to just do what you told them to do until you tell them to do something else, kind of automatically. At this point in the game, I don't actually have access to the Gambit system yet, so I have to specifically tell my characters to attack and all that. Um, later in the game, you can set up so they automatically behave to certain parameters uh, that you set for them. Now one neat thing that they added to the Zodiac version of the game uh, when it released in Japan in 2007 was that of a turbo mode. So rather than just fighting enemies at normal speed here, there's a toggle if you press the L1 button and you move at double speed. And you can you can you can see that it doesn't affect the um, the music at all, it won't affect cutscenes and things like that, it's just the the gameplay aspect. And as you, you might imagine how this can be extremely useful if you're just traversing a large area or you know tackling, you know, just training up a little bit, trying to get some license points or uh, trying to get some loot. You make things a lot more efficient, a lot more convenient. Now let's just say you think this isn't fast enough, well the Zodiac Age remaster actually added an even more sped up turbo mode. So if we pop into the menu here, whoops, this menu, see we have our speed mode multiplier times two, let's set it to times four instead. Now we're really moving. So let me just take out some enemies here, and I'll just go ahead and keep it with the four times uh, boost mode here. And it's just a toggle. So, go back to normal mode, L1, boost mode, and so on. Now another thing that was added to the, that's actually new to the PlayStation 4 version and not in any of the PlayStation 2 versions, uh, you see that mini-map in the upper right? You know, it gives you an idea of where you are on the Giza Plains. And if you, you can pull up the map menu here. This is done with the pad button on the PlayStation 4 on the DualShock controller. 
And you can see, of course, the, the different areas you've explored. You can see where the save crystals are and shops, and you can see where the your objective, your current objective is. Um, but one, one thing they added was that rather than having to toggle in and out of the menu to access the map, you can press the L3 button down on the, the left control stick and pull up the map, just overlaying it on your on your interface as you play. So it might seem like a small thing, but this can be incredibly useful for you know, especially bigger areas like this or later in the game when some of the some of the dungeons kinda get a little bit more maze like. So trying to keep track of where you are. And it's just again another toggle you can set off and on whenever you please. Now you may have noticed that when I traverse between zones, like let me just head into the Western Sand here real quick. If you look at the upper left corner, you see a little icon there that shows that the game auto saves. The game auto saves between every zone, every every time you change zones. Let's go back. So that's of course something that might be very useful. So let's just say you're exploring, and some sometimes in Final Fantasy XII you'll just encounter enemies in the zone that are really above your pay grade, it's something you're not really meant to tackle right away the first time you can meet them. So see these werewolf guys? Well, let's just see what I can do. Let's go ahead and speed it up. And Van is dead. And Finello is dead. Game over. Well, rather than having to start back from, you know, my last save point, let's go ahead and load up the top file here is your autosave. And here we are. Not much time lost at all. Back in the the Giza Plains here. So Let's go back. Let's let's go ahead and head back to town. Well, now I'm over here in a village over here in the uh in the Ester Sand in the outpost. You see at the top there. So, the by far the biggest change made to the to the Zodiac job system version of Final Fantasy XII are how licenses work and how the license board works. So you, you may have noticed that when I was out battling before, uh, Vaughn was equipped with a spear and Pinello was equip equipped with a, a staff there. So that's because Van and Pinello are not the same job. They're two, they're, they have been set to two separate, two different jobs. So if I open up the menu here and open up the license board, you can see the license board that each character is set to. So underneath their license points there, you see that Vaughn is an Ulan class. It's like a spear, kind of a spear master. And Pinello is a monk. And if you look at the little silhouette of the, of the, of the grid they're on, on the board they're on, you'll see a couple of highlighted squares already. And those are the licenses they've already unlocked. And then you can also see that the shapes of their boards are different. Because in this version of the game, instead of each character, or rather all the characters, kind of being on one giant license board, um, where the, where any character can basically be set to any license, and basically you can have any character do what you want, like you could in the original Final Fantasy XII. Instead, in the Zodiac Age version, or the Zodiac Job System version, the characters are set, you give them a, a job or a, a certain board that they have to work with, and once you pick which job they're set to, it's permanent. You can't change them out of it. So Pinello's monk board looks like this, and you can see I've unlocked some of the licenses already. These affect what type of equipment they can wear, what skills they learn, what magic they can use, and a couple of other like stat things here. So like for example, she has 42 license points, and I can go ahead and just get this battle lore license. That increases her uh, strength a bit. If I flip over to Van here, He's got a uh, 92 license points, and he's we got all these license here. Let's go ahead and just give him spears too. I don't have these spears yet, but once I get them, he'll be able to equip them. And go ahead and give him accessories too, and and all that. So that's good for now. 
Now, in one thing that's important to note, in the original Zodiac job system version of this game, uh, you could only set one job per character. Now, there are 12 total jobs you can choose from in total. Uh, here we go. So here are the 12 different jobs. So in the original version of the, well, not the original version, but in the Zodiac job system version, you could only pick six, up to six of, of the 12 of them because you only have six characters in total to work with. Now, this was something that was criticized because people felt like it was too restrictive. So one thing they added in this remaster is that now each character can get a second job. So if you do the math, if you have six characters and they can each equip two jobs and there's 12 jobs total, that means you can have every job represented uh, in the in the game. So different jobs will have access to different skills and different weapons and uh, different abilities and things like that. For example, um, Pinello has access to Cure. So I don't have a Gambit set up yet, like I mentioned before, but she can do the as a monk. She can do that spell for me. So I'm over here in the Esther Sand. Where am I? You can pull up this. Let's go ahead and head to Nalbana Fortress here. As you can see, I've gotten pretty used to the the four times turbo mode. It's hard to imagine that I could go back to playing the game at normal speed the whole time, all the time again. It's one of those little nice little bonuses to have in the game, especially if you're playing it. Now, the Zodiac job system version of the game made lots and lots and lots of different tweaks and you know minor adjustments to the games for things like like where chess. Uh, up here, and what what are the contents of chests, and even things like like weapon effects, and what what different what different stores carry. So, like for example, if you're following a, a guide, and they tell you to buy something at a certain store, or get something out of a chest, it may not be quite the same in this version because just a lot of things have been um, have been tweaked a little bit. So, if you're not familiar with the kind of the loot system in Final Fantasy XII. You can you basically sell your loot to any uh, any store, and then that can unlock different bizarre items. So that's one way to get rare items, rare weapons, is if you get certain um, if you get certain loot items in the game, you can sell them and get weapons, um, rare weapons, and things like that. So lots of lots of small changes and uh, tweaks made to the game. Uh, for example. There are several points throughout the game where a guest party member may join your your team, your party, and uh, in this version, in the, uh, the Zodiac job system version, you can actually take control of them. You can change their gambits, they level up, and all that. Still can't change their their equipment though. So I'm back here in Rabinester, and just one small but infamous thing I wanted to point out. Um, if you've uh, played Final Fantasy XII before, or if you're a Final Fantasy fan, you've probably heard about the Zodiac Spear. Um, pretty infamous for its odd acquisition quirk. And what that is is that throughout the game there are four specific tre treasure chests that um, are otherwise unrelated, like you have no idea. Um, why this would be the case, but if you open one of these chests, one of these four chests, you would lose access to the Zodiac Spear. Now this was in the original version of Final Fantasy XII. Uh, in the Zodiac Job System Edition, I mentioned earlier how a lot of chest contents and shop contents and things like that uh, were altered, uh, tweaked a little bit, and the Zodiac Spear is one of them. In fact, the Zodiac Spear is uh, obtained, it's one of the strongest spears in the game, and it's obtained in a totally different place. Um, nowadays, so you don't have to worry about uh, avoiding uh, certain chests or anything like that anymore in order to obtain the the Zodiac Spear. 
Now, I believe one of the chests would show up right here that you weren't allowed to open, right here. So, treasure chests in Final Fantasy XII, a little bit unlike more classic RPGs in that they don't, you, um, instead of just finding them and looting them, and you know, they're always in one spot, treasure chests in Final Fantasy XII can um, spawn, so they have a chance of appearing in certain spots. And then their contents can also change. You know, they have a certain chance of holding money and a certain chance of holding a certain item. And one other uh, small but useful addition to um, the Zodiac job system version is that you can respawn a treasure chest by moving, uh, by zoning in and out of the room like I've been doing here, um, just one screen away. In the original version of Final Fantasy XII, you had to move three screens away uh, in order to in order to get treasure chests to respawn. So this is something that you do a lot if you're looking for a certain item in a chest or, or something like that. So I'm here in Rabanaster and of course these sorts of city areas are where you do um, all your sorts of shopping for equipment and items and money uh, and uh, magic and things like that. Let me pull up your map here. So let me go to the magic shop. So this is the magic shop. I believe I've purchased everything already. Yeah, blind, uh, cure, fire, and s slow. So how it works, kind of like uh, um, I think some of the tactics games is that you buy a an ability. So you buy it once and you just got the star next to it, meaning I purchased it. And that means anyone who has the cure license will be able to use it. So. Uh, Pinello on her monk license board can you can use cure. I don't think Vaughn will be able to learn it. Excuse me. But any other like any other job that happens to have a cure spot on their license will be able to use the magic. Over here in the Esther Sand. A couple of other additions that to the Zodiac job system version of the game. One you may have saw on the on the on the opening title screen, trial mode. So what trial mode is is that it's a separate mode. Um, it's it's totally independent from the main game. Where well, not totally independent. It's separate from the main game in that you import your your characters and their and their current stats and licenses and equips and all that into trial mode. And there there are about a hundred different stages you can challenges you can tackle and these different stages you know are put you against different enemy groups different boss creatures and things like that and so depending on how far you are in the game you can challenge yourself against these different extra creatures and see how see how well you can do in the trial mode a couple of other additions don't really come into play until the end of the game um, is that's with a new game plus feature it's not like other new game plus features where you can basically like import everything into a new game, all your stats, all your items, all your equipment and things like that. But rather you can basically start the game in either what's called a strong mode, where your characters start at level 90 and they um, can basically, you know, over, you can, you're basically overpowered throughout the entire game. Or you can do a weak mode where your characters start at low levels and they actually don't gain any, gain any EXP, so it's a challenge mode. However, neither of these things you can actually you can only access these things on a on a second playthrough. So a couple of the last things to mention here, uh, if we pull up the menu again, this menu. For this remaster, uh, you have two different soundtracks: the original or the reorchestrated. You can toggle those as, toggle those at any time. As well as the language selection, you can do English or Japanese voices, toggle it whenever you want. And you have all the us other usual uh, um, options here. Why is my battle speed not on fast? So all the other options here. Speed mode times four, of course. And now for the rest of this video, I'm just going to do a hunt, actually. So there won't be any commentary from here on out. I'll just finish this hunt and just you can see how the game looks and how it plays.
And that's it for this little preview of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. Hope you learned a few things, or maybe just got a nice chance to see what the game looks like and sounds like and all that. So, as always, uh, check us out at RPGsite.net for the latest news and reviews for the RPG genre. You can check us out on Twitter on twitter.com slash RPGsite, at RPGsite. Thank you so much for watching, and join us next time.